Now, geckos can make a great alternative to the hobbyist who's looking for an animal with the traits of a lizard, but just doesn't necessarily have the room to house one. But with that being said, there are definitely quite a few different species of geckos to choose from, and with all this variety, it can be a little difficult to choose. So I thought I'd take today and talk about the top five tropical geckos that you can own. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Dakota, what does top five tropical geckos you can own mean? Top five what? Like what, what are the top five best? I don't, what, what, what are we talking about here? Answer your question, yes. Roll the intro. Kicking off our list, we are going to be going over number five, the gargoyle gecko. Now, have you ever thought to yourself, man, I really want a gecko that does everything that a crested gecko does, but I don't really like crested geckos. Can I get something that looks a little cooler and also gets bigger and also is a little more tolerant to higher heats because my house stays a little above your average room temp? If, if, that, if that's you, probably like three people out there, gargoyle geckos are the ge gecko, I almost said lizard, gecko for you. Now, I don't mean to bash on the crested gecko. It's not gonna be on this list if that's what you're thinking. There's just too many crested geckos. I don't wanna add them to this list. Um, gargoyle geckos are pretty cool. I was pretty, I never really think much about the gargoyle gecko. It's one of those like, I don't, it's like an off-brand. I, I, so I always feel like the gargoyle gecko is like the Pepsi and crested geckos are Coke. Obviously the Coke's more popular and like gargoyles are the runner up. That was my previous, you know, indications on what how I felt about the gargoyle gecko until I actually started owning one because someone just gave them to me for free. And then I was like, whoa. These guys are actually pretty rad. I don't know, there's just something about the gargoyle that I like a lot more than Crested Gecko. It has more of this like reptilian old style like dinosaur look rather than like the Crested Geckos to me feel like they're like quirky. Oh, look at these cool little colors. They're like cute, adorable little things. And then the gargoyles are like real. I don't, that, that doesn't make sense, but it's just, it's it's the thoughts that are coming out of my head. I just feel like gargoyle geckos are like a more like edgy dinosaur-like gecko compared to the crested gecko. So that's my reasoning. Let's move on. And then going down our list, we're gonna be talking about number four, they're mean, they're green. Good luck finding them because they hide in mostly because they're almost camouflaged into their surroundings. Number four, the Chihua gecko. Chihua? Chihau, ch Is that Chihua? Siri, how do you pronounce Chihua gecko? According to Geckos Unlimited, I think Chawa is a major one you left Chawa? out. Chawa? This one is actually Kuhua. I say Chuhua and Kuhua, depending on whether I remember to say it correctly or not. Once again, well, which one is it? Years of mispronunciation what? makes this one hard for me to say correctly all the time. No, yes, 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 thank, yes, Siri, I agree. What was it? Kahua? Chuhua? Which one was the right one? You said two and then said which one's correct. That doesn't make it. Siri! Siri! Number four, the Chewy Gecko. Fuck it, I'm just gonna say Chew, uh, Chew, wait, what was it? Now, I'm all tongue-tied now, Siri. Siri fucked me up with this whole video. I mean, we're, gonna, we're just gonna say Chewy. Now, the Chewy Gecko is pretty rad. It's like, basically, you took some moss and you made it into a gecko. That's really what the Chewy Gecko is. Uh, it's actually probably one of my favorite species of geckos. It's definitely something that I really wanted to work with chewy geckos and that was something I did a lot of research on. I really wanted to get into them. Um, lychees were another one, but just the fact that the way you the way you have to go about breeding lychees and also the fact of how much they cost, uh, kinda, it started deferring me where I'm like, mm, I'm hesitant of it. I don't know if I really ever get into that project. So I found chewy geckos. I was like, oh, I actually think these actually look cooler than lychees. Uh, these look awesome. They get to a great size. Uh, again, looked into their breeding and it turns out uh, from some people, I, I don't know if this is true or not, but just hearing from some people's experience, um, Chewies are actually more difficult in their breeding process than the Lichianus geckos, and also they cost pretty much the same. You're looking at six to two thousand dollars. So, cool gecko probably won't breed it. Maybe, maybe, maybe one day. I don't know. 
I don't know, it's just something about Tatsuri geckos that I love. I mean, they have like this great camouflage pattern. They literally just look like moss. Um, that's, I mean, that's the reason. I, I don't know. This is just a top five best. It has no frame of mind, no basis on what needs to be said into what order. I am just saying things and then moving on to the next section like we're going to be doing right now. Now, speaking of geckos that really just blend right into the surroundings and look literally just like natural objects, that's going to bring us to number three, the Europlatus. Dakota, you, you Europlatus, that's the whole species. Like, which one? Are you talking about the, the mossies, the satanic leaves, the fimbriatus? Like, wh wh which one are we going to? Hey, hey, well, well, remember, no basis in this video. I can say whatever I want without any consequences. Anything goes in this video. So, yes. The, a good gecko to get is just the entire Europlatus species. <laughs> there are a lot of Europlatus geckos that I really want. I remember, you know what, they've really blown up over the years. I remember probably like five years ago when they first were coming out. Uh, I believe the first one I actually saw was the Satanic Leafs. Um, I mean, it's a gecko that looks just like Leaf. I'm like, I have to get this. This thing is amazing. Uh, then I found out they were seven to $900 for imports. So I was like, huh, I'm never going to spend that much on a gecko. Then now here I am now spending $3,000 on geckos, so I guess that changed. But I actually, I still don't own uh, Satanic Leafs. I got a red toke though. <laughs> so many cool geckos in here. So of course, the Satanic Leafs, they literally just look like leaves. Uh, fascinating enough, so when I first started seeing them, they're really only like gray and brown, sometimes black. Um, recently, I, I'm on a couple of Facebook groups about the Europlatuses, and I found a, a blue Satanic Leaf gecko. I don't know if that's just like, how it hatches out, you know, some geckos hatch out and then that color usually dulls out or changes color, blah, 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 but it was blue and I was like, I didn't even know they made these things. So that's obviously, that's rad enough on its own. Uh, there's so many different species. Mossy leaves are wicked cool. If I was ever going to breed a Europlatus species, it would probably mossy tails. It seemed to be like the entry level breeding uh, project of Europlatuses. I've heard satanic leaves are wicked hard. It, I, the eggs, well the species themselves are super sensitive, but not only that, the eggs are hard to hatch out and it's very hard to get the, and the babies, you know, acclimated and getting them, you know, to thrive after they hatch. So for that reason, I, I just, something that's way too sensitive like that, I have way too many animals and way too many projects on my mind that I can't really, I, I feel like I won't be able to devote the amount of time and patience and just everything that you need in order to make these geckos thrive, breed, and the babies thrive. So for that reason, I probably won't ever get satanics. Um, probably, I might get mossy. I mean, I might own a satanic leaf gecko. I'll definitely probably own a mossy tail. I might breed them d later down the road. But uh, my wife's actually dream reptiles, the fimbriatus, the giant leaf tail. I mean, it's the gecko that's like this big, has those fucking weird ass eyes. <laughs> yep, the whole Europlata species. That's number three. I was trying to think of some smart ass to say, but hey man, five videos a week, it's hard to come up with quality content. So sometimes you just gotta have three seconds of me not talking and then me saying, moving on. Have you ever just been like, huh, this feels pretty good, pretty, pretty good size, weight to it? I wish this was a gecko. If that's you, then why are you holding a potato for one? What, what, what's going on there, buddy? I, I, I'm holding a potato for a skit, but why are you holding a potato? That's really the better question in this scenario. But also, that brings us to number two, the Lichianus gecko. I mean, it's the largest tropical gecko you can own ever in captivity. I mean, these things are massive. Coming in at like, what, what, like 13, 1500 grams? They are big geckos. And literally, I mean, come on, folks, this, this is it. You, you get to own this, you get to put this in your hand, but it moves. Uh, it also might try to bite you. you know, Lichianus geckos do have no, although people call them like the potato gecko, that's the, that's the whole joke. I had to explain it maybe. Some people are gonna be like, where the fuck is Dakota holding a potato? I don't understand. It was a joke. Um, Lichianus geckos are actually kind of territorial and defensive. They're almost, you can kind of refer to them as like toke geckos as far as that behavior goes. So I always think it's funny because when I first, you know, when I saw Lichianus geckos, two things came to my mind. Wow, I need that thing. It it looks fucking weird and wow I'll never have $1,200 to spend on a gecko. Should I make the $3,000 gecko joke again? I feel like it's not as funny the second time. They're cool, they're awesome, um, 
yeah, uh, that's pretty much all to say about them. I, I feel like uh, it's the mostly caged, or mostly territorial in their enclosure. Once you get them out, they usually are pretty fine. Um, I, I've obviously, everyone loves the, the video of the Lichianus gecko eating a banana, so that's like the only reason why I would get a Lichianus gecko, was to make one video of it eating a banana, and then be like, alright, we're done here, and now I, I'm gonna keep you for 20 years. No other videos, just a video of the Lichianus eating a banana. Moving on. Oh geez, wonder what tropical gecko's gonna be number one on this list. It couldn't be the one that the guy's best known for. The one where it's his biggest project. It's a, it couldn't be the gecko that's literally on his brand and all of his t-shirts. There's no way it could be. And you know, hopefully an ad doesn't pop up right now. Oh no, it's coming! I thought it was a little funny. Number one, the Toke Gecko. Ah, Toke Geckos. The feral barn cats of the reptile world. They're not very nice, they bark at you and make a lot of noise, and they're constantly trying to bite you. These geckos made the number one on this list because I think they are just badass. Uh, of course, the second largest gecko you can own in captivity, uh, coming in at usually anywhere around 12 plus inches, maybe a little more than 12, but usually, uh, you know, 10, 12 is usually the uh, average of geckos go. Um, of course, coming in, you know, toke geckos getting the name from the bark that they do, the toke calling. Uh, these guys are pretty cool. Super vocal, not very loud. A lot of people think they're like, oh my god, I can't own a toke because it's loud and it'll be in my room. I, they're really not that loud. Um, and it's a cool noise. Like, I would go to sleep to toke geckos barking and calling, mating calling at me. I think that would just put me right to bed. Well, like, go to sleep. Not like that. Come on, get your mind out of the gutters, guys. Oh, yeah. Come on. As most of you guys know, if you have joined this channel you know, with any amount of time, you know how Teke, Toke, Teke, Teke Genkai Geckos. Where's Teke, teke Genkai? What's that from? Why did I, like, know that right off the bat, but I don't know where it's from. Teke Genkai. Siri! What is Tekai? Te, what did I say? Tekai Genkai. It says, "What is Tekit? What did I say? Teach again, cafe." Yeah, you're a real fucking lifesaver, Siri. Thank you. Th thank you for all you do. Well, what kind of cafes are they teaching? All right, folks, there you go. You got two bad short little skits and me just rambling on for probably 10 to 15 minutes. We are gonna wrap it up right here. So if you like the video, please feel free to give us a thumbs up. If you wanna see some more of my animals or my breeding products, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, DBCB Exotics. We're also on TikTok. We got some cool merch like this design right here. It's a snake with some geckos and croc skinks. That's pretty rad. We also got this design, that design, but there's that design right there. That's the OG design. It's also my logo. You can find all that out down there at teespring.com slash DBCB Exotics, where you also can find Patreon, patreon.com slash DBCB Exotics, where you got the premium content, like animals you can get before you can get it for anyone else, that you got to see these animals before you get the animals. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I Sometimes I just do things and I'm like... What she said. We're going to wrap it up. But...